Here we are, Q&A, Thursday edition, 242. We've got a request to do isohexanol reacting with the following, and we only wanted part B. And over here, isohexanol, we got five carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, with an OH on the end. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Got a little R label action here. R will be changing. And potassium dichromate, aqueous sulfuric acid, that combination, that combination yields since we're doing a mechanism later, might as well draw the parts we need now. So we have chromic acid created when those things meet. We have water and we have sulfuric acid. And we have a reaction. And this one, uh, we're gonna make a carboxylic acid because there's two oxidations. Uh, part of our mechanism is gonna get us to this intermediate, which is an aldehyde. You can't stop here unless you used PCC instead. And that continues to yield our final product, which is isohexanoic acid. So that's the answer for B. And the mechanism we're going to do here. No, oh, and I didn't finish sulfuric acid. Shame on me. Okay. First part is to protonate chromic acid. And you get an activated chromic acid. And chromic acid looks like this. When it's activated, it has an oxonium. Why did we have to activate it? Because it's not reactive enough. Oh, I didn't draw the right thing. It's not reactive enough to react with a poor nucleophile, such as an alcohol. So we've activated it. The oxonium is pulling electrons away from the chromium, drawing in even a weak nucleophile like isohexanol. And that combination gives this result. You got your R. R is attached to an oxonium because there's still an H on the alcohol. Oh, although it's an oxonium now, not an alcohol. And we now have a new bond to chromium that has how many OHs? New one on the bottom, old one here, double bond still here, old OH here, plus charge there. What's going to happen to the plus charge is the conjugate base of sulfuric acid, which we made in the first step, will neutralize the oxonium. Oh, a little hasty on that arrow. You can grab the H. Sigma becomes lone pair. And we generate this intermediate, which is one step away from being what we call a chromate ester. In fact, I'm going to draw it a little differently. Not really, though, just color it differently. Mm, let's use purple. To make a chromate ester, we have to make this thing lose the purple part. That's water. And when we lose water in species containing OHs, we call it 
acid catalyzed dehydration. And acid catalyzed means you need both the conjugate base to remove a proton and the acid itself to protonate the OH. Why do we have to protonate the OH? Because it's a lousy leaving group. And the arrows we learned in Orgo 1 are these. Stay tuned as we learn how to do mechanisms a little more efficiently, but I don't want to do that just yet, but we're going to learn how to do mechanisms more efficiently later and save a little um, time. I have the, yes, is the question on? Sorry, I had the question here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was right around this area. So I was trying to figure out where that uh, other um, sulfuric acid came from. So there was the one that is um, grabbing the H, correct? So we used one in yeah. the step before to get rid of the oxonium. So right. is it just it was another free floating one that was there? That it was most that other most likely another free floating one, like you said. Uh, but in terms of uh, bookkeeping, we did regenerate sulfuric acid right here. So it was produced and it's conjugate base because it's a strong acid. It's conjugate base is always present, right? Because strong acids always give up their protons. So yeah, we're using it a second time here, using it, making it here and using it here and making it here. So it acted as a catalyst for two separate processes. One was to- So was it induced with the sigma bond? Was the sigma bond, you know, grabbing that H, making water, and then that induced the one on top? That's where it's a bit of a, H? it's a bit of a lie. That's, that's what I'm trying to- <laughs> It is a bit of a lie. This arrow should have been, and, and this is a preview for the future. The, the, there's nothing wrong with this mechanism here. Put it on a test, you get full full credit, okay? But in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down to two separate things and say, all right, to make this thing leave, first you protonate it and you would lose use a lone pair to do that. And I'd use a set of red arrows there. So we'd have these two arrows still, but one would start at the lone pair. And then I'd come in with a second color and say, hey, the second color happens second. And that's when I would change this to like a blue here and a blue here and a new blue from the sigma to generate a lone pair on the oxonium, which you made with the first red arrows. So if you want to look ahead at some videos where it says how to combine uh, steps in mechanisms, that will help this discussion. If not, just wait for it because we'll actually, it'll come in your reading when you're told to look at those videos. But yeah, yeah this, because I was a little confused help. by by what yeah. was being induced by what because it was a bit of a disconnect. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what was well, yeah. coming first. Yeah, it doesn't thought, make okay, sense maybe that a weak was... base would react before a strong acid, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'd have the strong acid doing this first because, hey, its name is strong acid. Strong means what? Reactive. What do we got here? An incredibly weak base. Is that going to start up before this does? Probably not. But uh, this is the way it was taught in 241. And we know more now. We're going to both break it down to be a little more descriptive and save steps later by combining steps wait for that yeah and i was also thinking with the top one okay maybe it did come first but then i was like um where is it accounted for because with that first catalyst you can see that yeah it's definitely um, you used. know with the chromium it's being taken and used yeah. so yeah. and then regenerated okay. here because it's a strong acid you don't even need a, a, a any strength to your base right yeah and then also having them in the same step i thought is are there two of them you know that's that's where the confusion no. came from, but now yeah. I understand. It was just two separate steps. Okay. Yeah. Good question. All right. And now we have a chromic ester. Uh, I redrew it a little differently. The this pi the... bond. Yeah, first chromic ester. Correct. And because yeah, right. R is about to change now, we can't have R there. Because R, if you look at it carefully, in this R, there's two H's on this carbon, right? When we're done, that same carbon as this carbon, it doesn't have two H's. So we have to account for that uh, R disappearing. And let's draw it a little better here. We got one, two, three, four, five, and a V. And we need that H. 
That H is the one that undergoes the oxidation. And what grabs it? Well, your side products here are H3O plus. I should have done what I did the other day, have the mechanism already on the screen. Hmm. I thought that was a nice thing to do, and then I forgot I did it. But pretty much this is the mechanism. I'm stealing this from chapter 10. And we've got an aldehyde here, uh, uh, but we have to get there. We, uh, we don't have a hydronium. Uh, we made a water come off here. This doesn't have to be the water we use. Uh, I'm going to put water right here. And where'd the water come from? It came in this step here, didn't it? OH and picked up an H. And it can become hydronium, but it's more likely part of the uh, aqueous environment. Another water does this. And you get your pi. The arrows are identical to what we call elimination, aren't they? E2. And that would make HCRO3, HCR with three O's, and a carbonyl. All right. Now, before you do the next oxidation, you have to hydrate this. How do we know that? Well, to do the first oxidation, you had to make a chromate ester. And I never labeled it, but here it is, chromate ester. And what did you attack the chromium with originally to make a chromate ester? Well, it was an alcohol, wasn't it? Going back over here, alcohol attacks chromium. So we don't have an alcohol, so we can't attack the chromium. But aldehydes, in the presence of aqueous sulfuric acid, we had a preview in chapter 10 of this. And when you're doing the watching the videos in chapter 16, we're going to review that again. And re it'll remind you that hydration is something that happens when aldehydes or ketones are in the presence of water. OH2, poor nucleophile. We need a catalyst, sulfuric acid. Again, catalyst is getting a good workout here. Oh, that's a small s. Don't have any osmium in this reaction whatsoever. Similarly, uh, when you had to attach an O to a carbonyl originally here, or a chromonyl, we had to activate it first. So activation of the species that you need to attack with the O happens again. So we're activating the carbonyl. And we're getting an aldehyde oxonium conjugate acid. We can do another R label, cut it short a little bit. R prime carbonyl new H, oxonium gets attacked by water. And we get, that's not, it doesn't look like, it looks more like a hook than an arrow, doesn't it? There we go. And now we have what is looking more like a hydrate. It's got a new H on there. Oh, <laughs> peroxide. Very bizarre. That's a C. Attached to car. Hmm. Having fun here. Take it from the top. Attach to carbon. And we have an oxonium. We have a sulfate ion. And we attack the oxonium in an acid-base reaction to generate the hydrate. Let's go down. Remember, our goal is to get to a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid is now off screen. I did it again, I drew that O. 
the O that's not there. And this is a hydrate. Why is it called a hydrate? Well, the new atoms are in black and they are definitely water. And now we can do this because we already showed how to make an activated chromic acid. You can copy another version of the activated chromic acid. You've already shown a mechanism that made it. Yes, this would be a separate chromic acid reacting to make an activated chromic acid here. And lone pair attacks. Getting good repetition in this mechanism. That's good. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. Is that just another activated chromic acid? Yep, that's a second molecule of activated chromic acid. So it's like you did this reaction. Hey, do it twice. Right. Yeah, I even right. write a times two up there for you. You don't have to write this on your exam, but you know, times two. Here's the first one right over here. There's the first one. And here's the second one we're using right now. Number two. I'll write number two down here. Okay, and we have an O oxonium and a chromium that has OH and OH, double bond, and OH, said oxonium didn't write its charge. And do we have a sulfate ion? Let's see. Yeah, we have a sulfate ion because when we made this, we made a sulfate ion, right? So hydrogen sulfate to be more appropriate. And we're well on our way to our second chromium ester. R goes to C, goes to O, but it has an H. Goes to O and a hydrate version of a chromate ester. Saving the purple here. And that needs to become dehydrated using the combination of sulfate ion as the base. It's an acid catalyzed dehydration. You need both the strong acid, which will protonate the O to make it a better leaving group. Base grabs H, sigma becomes, oh, no, 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 wrong H. I'm, I'm looking ahead at the oxidation and I didn't even do that right. So grabs that H, making a chromate ester. Here we go. Make pi, protonate and leave. And chromate ester number two is upon us. And we got an O, chromium, and double bond here. And all that remains is to get that to become that. Which means we have to realize that H, this is chromate ester number two, and what grabs that H is the same as before. You're making the same two side products again. We're going to end this segment by just finishing this mechanism and then do another segment for the next part. Dr. Whitaker. Yes. I have a quick question because sure. I got to go catch another Zoom call in just a minute. I'll oh, um, go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe on the week, your uh, week plan, mm -hmm. that it says at the end that we should start reviewing for chapter 13. Mm -hmm. But uh, the chapter 13 homework is due three days from now. Is that right? Uh, that's not right then. Okay. Is it really? I just want to make sure. Did I really have it that tightly started? I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, this 
17th is when 13th. Well, thanks hour. for thanks for pointing that out. I will be rectifying that, writing myself a note right now. I'm going to do that during our break, and then we'll pick up and you'll see the videos because I I realize you have to get to your other Zoom. Uh, okay. And you saw the topics we're going to be doing. So yeah, I will fix that and see you guys in about five minutes for the next segment. And adios. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Dr. Whitaker.